I would have just had the dealership do this because it's under warranty. But they told me they couldn't get this thing in for two months. Two months. Hire some more damn staff. If you're that backed up and that busy making that much money, that's just bad business on their part. Forget about me needing this rep repaired. I guess they hate money. So this is our life. Four kids, two cats, a widowed father under our roof, and a dog named Booker. Living a simple suburbia life, working nine to five, but wishing we had way more time to spend as a family together focusing on what's important and trying to spend as much time as we can in the sun. How do we make it through? The sunny days. Every day is a story, a chronicle, another day of life's adventures. How we make it through is different for everyone. This is life through our eyes. All right, today we are talking solar. Uh, solar on our 2020 Winnebago Vita 24F. This RV comes equipped with uh, two solar panels on it already. They're 100 watts each. Let me clarify something on solar power first. In most cases, yes, it is quite expensive to invest and equip yourself with solar power in adequate forms. It also takes quite a few panels to obtain enough sun to power your needs. But no question on the flip side, it is very environmentally friendly. So for those of you who love independence, freedom, being unattached and off the grid from any other source, or having to rely on anybody but yourself for an energy source, you in fact love solar, and so do I for that reason. Why be attached and following marching orders of someone else? I would prefer to only answer to the sun. So in that case, I'll take the little bits of trickling sun to power my fridge and electronics instead of stopping into the fuel station to refill the LP or diesel. There's a pre-wired port up there. Um, it, I guess we'd call it a, a box that goes down into the um, inverter. And those actually have three ports on them already. Uh, two of them wired up to the two solar panels and one extra one so you can put a solar panel up there. It also has on the side of the RV I'm going to come over here. A Zamp solar port right here, which I'll show you after a bit how that works with the solar panels. So you could have uh, four solar panels uh, wired up to this thing. I think it's a max rating of 475 watts. Uh, my four that I've got, the two that came equipped and the two that I bought are 100 watts each. So it will be 400 watts total. And I'm also going to install today the one extra panel up on the roof and I'll show you the one on the side what you can do at a campsite. The reason for that one is because if you don't have any direct sun to the roof you've got um, actually got a 15 foot extension cord and you can move this solar panel around and find some sunlight at your particular site. These are the two extra solar panels that I purchased. These are Sun Power brand and they come already with a connector on them. Although I had to purchase this additional connector. I will, I'll put uh, links to everything in the description down below. And also, um, I've got this extension cord. This is what uh, connects into the side of the RV. This side actually has two of these adapters on it, which I'll also spell out and these are uh, reverse polarity adapters problem is is when you connect the straight factory adapter from the sun power panel into the uh, extension cord into the side of the rv it's a reverse polarity so i had to actually double these up uh, switch that around and you'll get an error message from your uh, solar panel charger uh, controller inside the rv if you've got it wired backwards so you need this uh, just to be able to uh, reverse the polarity. It took me a little bit to actually determine that, but uh, they don't spell that out on the RV or when you purchase these panels of what you actually need. 
So I hope this helps. All right, so let's go up on the roof and I'll show you what we're dealing with. All right, so these are the two solar panels here, Sun Power brand, that come already equipped on the RV with this junction box made by Zamp Solar. As you can see, there's two of them plugged in. There's a middle one here that's wide open. These two um, actually have cords kind of wrapped around. They put some of that uh, roof liquid sealer over the top of this. Side note is I actually need to cut this off and open this up and figure out um, straight out of the factory or how we got this from the dealership. These two aren't working. Um, so there's nothing on the panel showing any reading from these two. I'm not sure if the wires are reversed, if it's not um, hooked up or what, but uh, I've got to open this up first, figure out what's wrong with that, and then um, install up here. I'm not sure where, probably over on that other side, and I'll run the cable over here, and I'll install that third solar panel. I have to clean this up before I put it back on. It's like they use some flex seal, which is good. Flex seal on the roof itself. I'm also noticing there's a fuse in here. Interesting spot for a fuse location. So a couple other things I'm analyzing is what the positive and negative is in case they got it reversed. Uh, obviously the top one is positive. So this is what I need to double check. But it appears like a simple 10 amp fuse is blown. Could it be that simple? Well, let's find out. Okay. I've got a new 10 amp fuse here. Put that in there. Now, let's see if it pops for any reason. Plug that in. Now I'm gonna go down and check the RV and see if we have power charging. Booker down there chewing on a bone. Well, what do you know? Here it is, and it's working. So it was literally just a simple 10 amp fuse. Oh my God, there it is. Charging status, that means it's charging. Here's the battery, That's, that symbol right there is actually showing that there is a solar panel connected. So if your system is blank, like mine was, then that means that it's not getting any solar charge. Battery condition's good and it's charging. I am excited. Woo! -hoo. Got it working now. On to putting it back together and getting the other two panels hooked up. Side note is, who the heck puts a 10 amp fuse up here? By the way, that actually says 40 amp. Well, that may be part of the problem. In my excitement of discovering that the fuse was blown, I didn't realize that this actually says 40 amp. So no question there shouldn't be a 10 in there if that's actually labeled 40. So I'm gonna go down and see if I can find a 40. Really reluctant to even put a fuse back in here. And I don't know why they would put the fuse block here when this is completely sealed put this down at the uh, solar charger control panel area on that end and then if it ever blows again I can easily replace it this is gonna be ridiculous to have to take this out again I would have just had the dealership do this because it's under warranty but 
they told me they couldn't get this thing in for two months. Two months. Hire some more damn staff. If you're that backed up and that busy, making that much money, that's just bad business on their part. Forget about me needing this rep repaired. I guess they hate money. Make more money by hiring some more people and bringing in more stuff. Oh well. Anyway, uh, nice and cleaned up. And um, now I'm gonna look at uh, cutting that piece out. So this is what the panel looks like when nothing is hooked up to it. This is how it was when we got it. It shows that the battery's hooked up and the battery is good, but the solar panels themselves were not charging. Um, and and it, this little symbol up here wasn't there, so it doesn't uh, didn't allude to that there were solar panels even connected, although they're on the roof. So um, I'm going to take this apart and probably put that fuse down here behind this panel. Here is this box. You can see the underside of it. Solar, battery, and uh, like I said, I'm going to cut this one, put in the fuse down here, slip it back behind here. If it ever blows, I can access this a lot easier than taking off all of the roof sealant. I've got to seal this back up. I've got a few different options. Um, I'm going to put the flex seal on at the last purpose. I've got some uh, caulk here, some weatherproofing caulk. I do have some flex tape, which is what they actually had on here too. So I'll probably put some of that down as well. So time to button it back up. Okay, while I let that dry, I'm going to scope out an area, uh, probably right over here, to put the other solar panel. And then from there, I will run the cable, uh, probably run the cable back behind the air conditioner and come up to this jack. I'm actually going to use this screw into the lock washer a galvanized washer. I'm going to put this rubber grommet underneath it, uh, underneath this. So as it goes down, it'll rest on a rubber grommet. And I'm going to use the flex tape underneath each one of these uh, holes. Okay, and so this is the last piece to show you is this external solar panel that plugs into the side of the RV. So what I've got here, um, this is the extension cord that you can stretch out to put this wherever to maybe gain a little bit more sun. Um, <clears throat> this is the piece that goes into the side of the RV. But here's what I need to show you. You need to put these two together and what happens here is it changes the positive and negative around and you need this because in order to plug this thing in to the panel which has the SAE connectors in order for it to go into this side 
and come out with the positive over here meeting the positive on this side which then plugs into the ZAMP solar connector here. Now we've got this plugged in. We've got an extension cord that's 15 feet long. Got the adapters here. The solar panel itself could be moved wherever you want and laid outside the RV to try to search out and find some more sun. So let's go back inside. Here is the finished product. Behind this now, of course, we've got the uh, fuse block, which I'll put on this side, so it's just the two screws to take it out if that happens to blow. But this is what the normal panel should look like. Charging status, this means it's charging. You can see where we're currently at. This is all four panels connected. Um, there's not a ton of sun out here today. It's pretty cloudy, but it shows the panels hooked up and it shows that it's charging. So now we're all set, 400 watts of solar coming down in. And like I said, this is primarily for charging your batteries. Uh, what we're really after is to be able to trickle charge in, charge the batteries, and the batteries in turn are actually powering the fridge off the grid. That's really where this comes into play. If you do a lot of boondocking, you do a lot of off the grid, like we are, this is what will really help you out in the end.